Pastor Frank Beck, uh, be heading this way in a minute here, would you please? All right, everybody, I want you to make sure that you take a good look at the uh, updates again uh, for, the, uh, for this week and read the different things there that are important, of course, and meetings that are coming up. Also, uh, we've included uh, an article out of uh, Global Partners that I really want you to read and not just hand an extra stuff out to you. Uh, this is um, quite a story, amen. It's called uh, When She Smelled, and, and you may say, well, what's that about? I want you to read it. It's very, very important that you, you do that. Uh, it's a great story, and it's really about the heart of missions, but not just missions over in this country here that's gonna be talked about in the article, but missions in our heart, right here in our own community, all right? So please take time to read that. I appreciate it. Uh, Pastor Frank has a few things to share with you here. With Thank you for bringing that up ship. because when I read that, I thought, oh, my goodness, we need to read this and we need to pay attention to. In your bulletin, your update, found this sheet, and I, I made a declaration on the back of this thing. It says, at Flint First Wesleyan, it's 2013, and Soul Shift continues. We will not be satisfied until people are changed at the very center of their being. And there are areas that God wants to work on in your life and in my life. And if you remember, you see little posters on the, the pillars there along the way. There are books that will help us. There are only four, four lessons in each one of them, but very practical little books of how you can change from me to you from slave to child, from seen to unseen, from consumer to stewardship, to ask, from ask to listen, from sheep to shepherd, from me to we. This is where we need the change, way down deep inside, is in these areas. And we have, I listed the groups that are already going, but I would like to see another six to eight groups built around these uh, soul shift uh, materials uh, during this year. My name's there. I, you can get my phone number, it's in all the directories. Please give me a call because I'd like to start some more groups and continue Soul Shift. Lord bless you. Amen. You can put it right back on there. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, whatever. You can, you can take it home with you if you like. Oh, thank you. No. <laughs> uh, we're always uh, happy to have. Um, uh, Frank Blewett, uh, share a poem. He has a poem uh, to share this morning. So come on up, brother, and wherever you want to be. I'm right here. Right here? Right here. Right here. That's good. All right. Well, really, after that song that the pastor sang, I don't think we need a service because that, was, that really touches my heart. How did you celebrate? 213 is not late. Did you make a New Year's resolution? If you did not, Christ is the solution. Accept him in your heart today. Follow him in every way. 213 is not too late to celebrate. Jesus will guide you through the years. Put your trust in him. He will calm all your fears. The new year is upon us, the time to change your ways. Jesus is right beside you, 
He will guide you for all your days. The change is so easy. Just ask him in your heart. Ask Jesus for forgiveness. The change right then will start. You will feel the difference with Jesus in your heart. Put the old ways behind you and start with the new. Always remember Jesus will always be there for you. So celebrate the new year with Jesus in your heart. Uh, experience a real relationship with God. Today we'll be sharing in the Lord's Supper. You who are walking in fellowship with God and are in love uh, and harmony with your neighbors and you who do truly and earnestly repent of your sin and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from this time in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and meekly make your humble confession to Almighty God. O oh God, let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we thank you that you ever loved us and provided for our redemption. We thank you for your Son who died to save us, and for your Spirit who invites us to draw near. Guide us now as we commemorate the suffering of our Lord. Help us to remember the cost of our salvation. Help us to commune with you and with each other. And so consecrate this, the bread and the wine which are here prepared, that as we partake of them, we may receive the spiritual benefits of Christ's broken body and shed blood. In his name we pray. Amen. I have the ushers come forward, please. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this, remembering that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart, by faith, and with thanksgiving. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this, remembering that Christ's blood was shed for you. It was personal. And be thankful. Let's pray. Father God, we're thankful today for all that you've done for us, but this, this was the most important thing for each and every one of us, it was your going to the cross for us. And we are pleased to remember that today. We are thankful to remember that today. Reminded that we are totally dependent upon you for salvation and for life itself. Thank you, God, for this time together as the body of Christ to celebrate Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. It's uh, wonderful uh, how you do that, and we appreciate very much your willingness to give uh, to God's work, of course, and to his glory. Father, we're thankful to be able to return to you a portion of what you've given to us to take care of, and we're glad to be able to share. It's what we want to do. It's our heart. It's our love for you and for your work. So receive it with that in mind, please, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> It's the first Sunday of that year. How's the new year been going for you so far? I hear somebody snoring over here. I'm not sure. <laughs> ah, it's just started, hasn't it? Well, I'm glad it started. I'm glad we're, we're here today in our uh, first, uh, first Sunday of the new year. Let's, uh, let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Peter the second chapter, and I'm just going to read verses 9 and 10. No, I'm not. I'm going to read 1 through 10. I want to read the rest of that. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Let newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but, not to, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. And then these text verses. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Just guide us today, please. Everyone's, every word spoken, every word received, may it be what you had intended. That is what we truly want. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's easy for us to, uh, I think it's easy for us anyway, to, to be disappointed about things that don't always work out right. And uh, to be caught up in the negative versus the positive. And we've heard a lot about being positive, I guess, in life. And, and yet, the uh, truth is, it's pretty hard sometimes. And uh, because of the things we have to deal with. But you and I are very, very blessed and fortunate people because, you know, we, we know that Jesus is our Savior. And He is the victorious forgiver. And as a result, we are the victorious forgiven. And my concern, I guess, as a pastor, as we look ahead into this year, as we move ahead, that we enjoy the journey that God is enabling us to walk. No matter how difficult times may be from time to time, He is with us and we are victorious. We are in a wonderful position, you and I. It's kind of like when, I, when we were, my wife and I, we lived down in Ypsilanti, um, we had a break-in at the house. And it was, it was not a pleasant thing at all. We were gone, and somebody broke through the front door, smashed through the front door, and stole a lot of our things. And at the time, I thought, this is, this is awful, and it was awful. It was not a pleasant experience. Maybe some of you have gone through that, where you have had people steal things from you. But the one thing I found out, and we'd lost some what we call precious things, heirlooms as well as uh, normal things like a computer and things like that. But one thing that, that Sue and I thought about, we, we looked at each other and said, you know what, we're going to survive the break-in. We're okay. God's taking care of us. It's not about the stuff. And, and the thing I'm, I, the reason I'm telling you that is because as we look at this new year, there are going to be times where things are not going to be easy for us. Last week we talked about faith. Today we talk about the, the connection to that in the fact that we have been forgiven. And no matter what happens to us, we will survive the break-ins that take place in our life the difficult times that we face. And we couldn't say that without Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He gives us reason to live and reason to think positively. And for you and I as Christians, we should live this year without any apology for who we are. To stand not ashamed of the gospel because we know what the gospel means for us and what Christ has done in our life. And this year as we move forward, we move forward a victorious people. A people, as the scripture says, that belongs to God. The first thing I would say this morning in this introduction is that we are forgiven and we are free. We have been set free. And I want to read from Romans 6, 
verse 18. It says this, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. In other words, you are now connected to that which is good and you have been disconnected from that which is bad because of what Jesus Christ has done. That which that has pulled you down and has made life difficult and sin is exactly what the problem is in our world today. We know that in the lives of people. But you and I have been set free. We have been forgiven and set free. There's no reason why you and I should not enjoy this journey that we're on because we are walking with God. We've been set free. We have also been filled. And in Acts 2, verses 38 to 39, Peter was speaking to the crowd that had come and was listening to his sermon. And he said, as they were asking, brothers, what shall we do? When the, when the, when the truth was laid out, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you have been forgiven, you are one who can be filled with God. As you accept Christ as your Savior, He fills you. And you are able to grow and you're able to do the things that we talk about with soul shift, the changes that take place where God wrought a wonderful work within you and changes the way you look at things and the way you live. We have been forgiven and we have been filled with the Spirit of God. I believe it is important for you and I to claim, to claim the birthright that comes because we have been born again. The birthright of joy and experiencing a real relationship with our Heavenly Father. To know that we have an inheritance in heaven because of what Jesus did. We have every reason to be happy, for goodness sakes. We are also forgiven and have become partakers. And I think that that's a beautiful truth as well. In John 1, verse 12, it says this, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. You and I are partakers in something very, very special. We are partakers in the victory that Christ has done on the cross, the work that He has done. We are partakers in the body of Christ. We are partakers in our relationship with God. What a joy that is. We have it all. We have everything. Everything that we need, everything we could possibly need comes from Him. We are forgiven and we are partakers. We're forgiven and we have been filled. We are forgiven and we have been set free from the power of sin. And it's time the church claims the born again birthright that we have through Jesus Christ and start to stand up with some joy and excitement with the life that God has given us. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity to do God's will and to show the world that Jesus is for real. And that what he has done in our hearts is for real. We can stand tall today. And you might say, well, I'm not perfect. God is. You might say, I don't know if I can really share in what you're talking about. Because you have accepted Christ as your Savior, you do share in that which God is talking about. And I, I, I always, I love this one psalm. I'm going to turn to it. It just struck me as we were just going to read a few verses of it. It's not a short psalm. Psalm 103. It begins out, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. 
Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, that's from hell, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I love it already. And, and then a little further on in the 11th verse, through the 13th verse, or the 12th verse, 11th and 12th verse, it says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As, and this is, as far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed your transgressions from us. What a beautiful thing God has done. What a beautiful thing we can claim today. Because of Jesus, because of his love for us, we have everything, everything. So, now, to what we had started with in 1 Peter. Because, you know, again, some people will say, well, I don't, I, I just am not, you know, perfect. God has made us perfect through the shed blood of Christ. Is his interpretation. It is God's uh, way of defining perfection. The cleansing of the soul, of the heart. The cleansing of the human being deep within. The change that takes place by him. So what happens then? If we look at that scripture we read this morning, let's pick it up at the ninth verse. It says, but you are a chosen people. A chosen people, singled out by Christ. I was not the swiftest basketball player in the world. I really wasn't. That may surprise you. Uh, of course it would, because you didn't see me dribble the basketball. But, I, 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 so, so when I was in grade school, uh, you know, they'd choose up teams. First, I, you know, recess is a killer for me. Recess. And they'd choose up teams. And, and I was a lot thinner than I am now. I was kind of scrawny. You know, really scrawny, man. And, and the other kids were there, and, and then the team leaders, they'd be picking teams. Well, we want uh, Bachheisen. Let's have him, and let's have, uh, let's, yeah, Hofstra. Let's cut, these are all Dutch names. I just thought I'd introduce you to them. And you go down a list, and there's Burwise. And man, I'll tell you, it, it, when it was even numbers, I knew I'd be chosen. But when it was uneven numbers, it wasn't going to happen. But I loved it when somebody would choose me until I took my first shot. But listen, they would choose me. Being chosen is a very wonderful thing. Everybody likes to be chosen. Don't you like to be chosen? You know, like when you got married. I mean, you're... When most of you got married. <laughs> and, and you know that day when, that, what, and it, it might have been the woman asking or the man, I don't know, it's different today, and they would ask, would you marry me? And you, you're kind of stunned for a minute. Your mouth hang open. And you kind of go, and they think you're debating the idea. But inside you're thinking, I'm about to be chosen. Somebody's choosing me. Somebody wants me. Wow. And you kind of stumble over the words, yes. Maybe the next day you're going, what have I done? But at the time, it's a joy to be chosen. And you and I have every reason to stand tall today as Christians. Because God has done a work in our heart. He has chosen us. There's all kinds of songs out. One of them is, He knows my name. He knows your name. Isn't that wonderful? He knows your name. He also knows what you've been doing. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But anyway, He knows your name. He, he has chosen you. He has made you. He designed you. You are a miracle in and of itself. Gloria, that's true. Isn't it? We are miracles. We are amazing what God has created. And he has chosen us. We are chosen people. I know it's referring also, in this case with Peter, it certainly was referring to the Jewish people. I understand the theology in that. 
But I know that Christ came and died for the world. He died for every human being, every individual. So I am one of the chosen. I'm one of the saved. I'm one of the forgiven. <laughs> and think about how wonderful it is. So we are a chosen people. We're also, it says here, a, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. That means you have standing in God's court. You have standing there. You know, as a lawyer, you have to have standing in order to walk into a court. You have to have standing in that court before you can uh, talk about anything. But God has done something for us. We are a royal priesthood. We can go directly to Him. We can talk to Him about anything and everything. And He recognizes us. Because He knows our name and He knows that we live because Jesus lives. We, he knows that, that we are Christians and so we now have standing before Him and we're able to come before Him. Humbly, yes, but we come before Him and we say, I need to talk to you, Father. And He welcomes us. We are talking here about Almighty God. And we are talking about the impact that God has had upon our lives. And I know the Bible says we are not to think of ourselves as more important than what we really are. And you and I as Christians understand that we are nothing without Jesus. But at the same time, God has allowed us a privilege standing with Him. A privilege of relationship with Him. A privilege of a son and daughter with Almighty God to be able to talk to Him about anything and come to Him in the name of Jesus. A royal priesthood. Good standing in God's courtroom because He knows us as the forgiven. A holy nation. I mentioned how He has changed us and that that we are pure in a definition that He has made and that He sets forth. We have received the righteousness of God. We are on the right track, doing the right things, uh, uh, have our priorities in the right order. We have, we have everything. We, we are called the righteous. Did you know that you are one of the saints? And it didn't... It didn't take someone else making that decision. It's God who made the decision. That you are one of the saints, and so once again we can stand tall as a holy nation, a, a nation that's truly been set aside in a, in a righteous sense for the rest of the world to see. Of course, we know that what the world needs to see is the light of Christ in us, which means that we are Christ-like. And that we are to walk as Christ wants us to walk. We are to be what Christ wants us to be. We're to have the attitude of Christ. We know that. It's crucial. But you and I, because we know that it's He, Almighty God, that has saved us, that is He who has, give us, has given us this privileged relationship, that is He alone that says that we can have that inheritance, it's He who has given us a, a birthright in Christ that we can claim because of what he's done. That we have reason to stand tall. To not be ashamed. To walk forward. And let the world know that Jesus lives. We don't even have to force it. You see, because when you understand fully what you have become in Christ, you begin to live it. You begin to breathe it. You begin to be that new person that God has made. You don't have to force yourself, friends. It's not about works. It is about faith and trusting in God. And, and as He infiltrates our life and fills us and saturates our very being, we just go right ahead and live. And we live joyfully and peacefully knowing that God is totally in charge. We can live the dream the joy of God. We can run the race, as Hebrews talks about. Shaking off all that nonsense that shouldn't be there. 
all that sin and keep him moving forward and doing so confident that as we look at Christ, knowing what he did, that we haven't suffered near as he has, and we can say, oh, he's my Savior, and I can walk, and I can talk, and I can live for him. I just want to breathe him. And he wants his life to flow through us. Not only a chosen people and a royal priesthood and a, a holy nation, but we are a people belonging to God. Sometimes we have a little struggle with that because we like to be in charge. And the idea of somebody else running the show, hmm, we don't always like that. No, nobody's got that problem? I heard one groan out there, but you know. The truth is, and I've said it before, so often we try to run things, we try to do things. And I, I, I will admit, you know, we got, we got a pretty good brain going for us and everything, but what we don't have is God's wisdom without Him. And, and the idea of belonging to Him is a wonderful thing, to know that we have a home, to know that we have a, a family, to know, to know that we have somebody caring about us, because when you belong to someone like God, you see, He's watching over everything, just as He watches the sparrow. Just as He watches all and everything, He is watching you and me. So as we go into this next year, and we're here already, but as we move forward and this first Sunday of the new year, we can say, oh, I know that God is watching over me. I know that He has me in the palm of His hands. I know that He is caring for me every day. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know He's got tomorrow figured out. I'm His. I belong to Him. I belong to Almighty God, the Creator of the universe. I am forgiven. And sin does not control me anymore. God does. And I live without any apology for my faith and my love for God and my dependence upon Him. And I'm glad that He's there when I call and when I'm weeping when I'm sorrowful, when I don't know what to do next, when I'm confronted with a wall I didn't know would ever show up that I would have to try to get around or get over, when I, when I never dreamed this would happen, because there, there are times this year, because we know how it works, that there'll be times where you say, why did this have to happen? And there will be no easy answer. Because connecting all the dots is not something that we're good at. But one thing that we can be good at because of what God has done in our life is we can go to Him with everything that we have on our heart. Everything that we face as a family or as friends or as an individual. We can go to Him and say, God, you got to help me. Please, God. And then all of a sudden we realize He is helping us. We are the forgiven and we belong to Him, and He is caring for us every day, and we don't have to be totally disappointed in life. We suffer disappointments as things come our way. Circumstances are not always fair, but my God is fair. Circumstances are not easy to overcome, but my God lifts me up in the midst of it, and He reminds me, I am not alone. And he loves me. And I have reason to smile. I have reason to look forward to the next day and the day after that. Because my God truly will meet all my needs. Further in that scripture it says that there's a purpose for us. It says that indeed uh, we are there to declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. That declaration is made in several ways, just as I mentioned. It can be in how we live, how we talk, how we walk. Nothing forced but allowing the Holy Spirit to be in charge of us. Listening to God. Being willing to stand up for him in the midst of things where maybe we, we might feel a little odd bringing it up. This, this video that was on was really cool because here's this guy relating everything to it. Everybody, you see the other guys kind of chuckling off in the distance like, whoa, amen. And they're kind of mocking him a little bit, but he kept right on going and he was right on target, wasn't he? And the kid kicked the ball straight. I think that's cool. And for you and I, 
We can stand up strong. Stand with your families. Stand with your children. Stand with your spouse. And be willing to say, you know, I love Jesus. the same freedom.